So good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good. Same here, I'm very good. So first of all, uh, we wanted to apologize for what happened last uh, Sunday, I guess. Remember what happened? Uh, there was a lap the laptop that we were using. It was actually, uh, you know, uh, broken for some reason. So uh, then we had to buy a new laptop. So uh, while he was teaching you, the power I think went off, and then he couldn't, you know, fix it back. So all gone. I heard somebody was saying because you were talking. Huh? What happened to him? <laughs> yeah. So anyways. That was what happened. So, anyways, uh, so we have a new laptop today. Today, so things should be okay. So it, it won't happen. Um, so, uh, anybody remembers what we did last time? What was the perfection we did? Anybody remembers? The perfection of... Uh, the perfection was speech, um, didn't it? Speech? Like, um, really? like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like how to use your words correctly. Uh, I think it was a part of that topic, I guess. I think such a, right? The truthfulness, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we talk the perfection on truthfulness. So in that topic, we discuss about uh, different uh, types of bad speech, lying. So actually we had to talk about uh, being truthful and then uh, using uh, speech to uh, unite people, we not unite friends, family, right? Not to divide, right? There are people who, you know, even during the conversations, they divide people based on different uh, things, right? Culture, their beliefs, right? It happens, it happens all the time, unless we put a stop. And what about uh, other uh, types of bad speech, I guess? It's third thing was to speak good words to, I mean, happy words, right? Not uh, words that can hurt other people, right? Is it a is it a is it a skill or is it a an easy thing to talk uh, good words? It is a skill, right? Unless we, uh, I think it's a practice. We have to keep practicing, otherwise it won't come up to you. And then last one was uh, not to gossip. So talk something meaningful, you know, good for the time, good for the you know moment, good for the uh, situation, right? So this is what we talk, we'll be talking. So today, what are we supposed to do? I mean, what what was what is the next uh, parameter perfection? Danang sila chanikamma. And then Danang sila chanikamma. Panya virena panchama. Kanti satcha. We did up to satcha. Then aditthanati. Aditthan is the perfection today we are supposed to do. Aditana. Anybody has any thoughts about Aditana? Set? Have you heard this term? Aditana? No, I haven't heard it before. How about Adhistana? I mean, something similar, right? Adhistana. Adhistana Karanoi and Singhal. Have you ever heard from your mother, father? We were talking Adhistana Karanoi. Maybe, like they <laughs> Maybe they haven't done it. Maybe they haven't done it so far. Tarshan? Uh, Happy to see you too today. Is this your second day? Yeah, second day. Third or second. I think second, third, yeah. third. No, third. Third thing? Oh. Yeah. Wow, you're wearing a very nice uh, headphone, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so have you heard, ever heard about this term? Adhistana Karano and Singhala, your mom, dad speaking. Adhistan. Uh, well, oh, oh, 
Um, I think it means like make a goal and like reach for it. Something I think. like that, right? Something like that. Uh -huh. Something uh, similar. Yeah. Obini has something to say? Uh, yeah, same as my brother, Hamdrene. I think it's like a, making a goal and reaching your goal, basically. Oh, setting a goal, making a goal and reaching it. Uh, that's a little bit expansive. Huh? See? There are things to add. <laughs> well, setting the goal and then reaching there. You know? Reaching is the problem. You can set goals. Uh, Dita, good. But thank you, though, bringing up that, you know, perspective. I think that means uh, something similar to what we do is saying, like, so, and Nangi was saying, uh, yeah, it's like something that you're, like, that you've won before. Like, they say, like, victory. Uh -huh. Maybe that's, like, Shaneak. Like medals, honor, like stuff like that. But very simple. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah. Um, so, for example, let's say, um, okay, let me think about this for a second. I'll get mm -hmm. back. Okay. So, the Pali term called Adithana uh, comes from uh, Sanskrit them called Adhisthan. But Sinhala people, they have taken, they, they have loaned words from both languages, right? The Sinhala language, they, they, they borrow, they loan words from Sanskrit and Pali. Anybody knows how the how does the Sinhala language uh, originate? How is the vocabulary of Sinhala language, uh, you know, uh, made up of? This is your culture, right? This is your language. So how how are the words of singular language, you know, get produced? Like, what what are what are their origins? Now in English we know there are Greek words, Latin words, French words, right? There are certain uh, you know original things that we can see if you really want to look at, look them up in singular. Anybody ha has any thoughts? Mm -hmm. Where do many words of Sinhala come from? Um, I know there's like Suddha Sinhala, that's like the original Sinhala, and then there's like other words that come from Mr. like Tamil. Mr. Um, Mr. Sinhala. Mm -hmm. There's like Tamil words, there's Sanskrit and Pali. Yeah, a lot of words. Yeah, Dilika? Yeah, to add on what uh, Udu was saying, like when uh, Sri Lanka was captured by like countries like um, British, when they captured uh, Sri Lanka, like they, I think, gave a lot of, like, they moved around with a lot of words, like, that have transformed into what Sri Lankans use these was, days. Was Sri Lanka captured by the foreign people, or the Sri Lankan king gave the country to, to, the, <laughs> yeah. to the, uh, the, you know, the, the colonial people? What happened, actually? I think they called. I think, I think this guy gave Sri Lanka, you know. He was sort of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what happened. He gave it. He gave it. Yeah. I don't know what happened with the Portuguese and Dutch, but for the British, yeah, uh, there was a thing happening. So, what, but what, what was your point? So, when the, the foreign uh, people say invaders, yeah, uh, the others, those of uh, colonial people, right? When they came to Sri Lanka, this is how they say. Do you, you think that there were words that crept into the uh, mainstream language? Yeah, much like. That some of the cultures of the like uh, people that have invaded Sri Lanka, like some like some cultures like Sri Lankans still use this to stay, right? So maybe like some languages might like words may have been transformed from this to that. Mm -hmm. That's my point like. Uh, we we have like a clear example like when you call Sri Lanka Taprobaina, Taprobaina uh, Ceylon, right? Uh, Tambapani. I mean Tambapani is like Tamba means copper, right? Taprabain comes from uh, Tambapani, I guess, you know, the place where you find uh, copper, right? But anyways, here, what we understand from the early grammatical works of Sinhala, not the normal ones, Sinhala, I would say, classical Sinhala, I'm referring to the 12th century, 12th, 13th centuries. This is the Kurunagala era. So there were books written on Sinhala grammar. So if you look at 14, 15, uh, the, the Sundays of time, the messenger poems times, and then 16, 
sorry, 15, 16, the Portuguese came, 16, I guess, the Dutch came, 17, I guess, uh, the British came. They, they, they were there for almost like two centuries, I guess. So anyways, it is said that it has three main, uh, I would say, uh, original, I would say origins, uh, when we talk about singular language, tatsama, uh, tatbhava, and nippan, right? These are singular words. So that means most of the words in singular they are taken similarly from similarly from the sound of Sanskrit and Pali. Now, uh, like let's say, uh, how do you call such words? Uh, they are not homonyms, heteronyms. In English, how do you call such such words? Like, um, okay, so anyways, so there is this uh, Sanskrit word and the Pali word, uh, and then they were taken in the same way into single. Can you name an example, uh, Ovidi? We, we speak in single, right? Give me, give me an example. You sing a lot, right? So you should have known. Uh, I'm not sure. Pro uh, I guess the like the example that you gave on doing the Adishtana, and I'm pretty mm. sure it's like that's a good one. But what's the original singular one? Adishtana. Is it a very easy one? Normal, comfortable one? No. No. But Adishtana means I mean, you feel like something sophisticated, right? But Adishtana is more into pun. Now, if you take. Uh, uh, Janadi Patituma. Janadi Pat who is that guy? Who's Janadi Patituma? The president. President. Which language is it in? I'm not sure how it is. Sanskrit. So that's a word that came from Sanskrit to Sinhala. But Jana Patituma is in Sinhala. Is it that popular, that, that comfortable? Do people use that? Not that much. So there are words that are taken exactly in the same way from Sanskrit and sometimes in Pali. And but there are Nippana words, original words in Sinhala too. There are some words, right? But it's, this is not language class, why better more not talking all these things, but just want to let you know Adhistane is what uh, we understand uh, from that one. Give me a second. I was looking at why it is so warm over here, and there is a heater directing at me. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So Adistani, Adistani means a resolution. <clears throat> it's a good topic, right? So we make resolutions. Set. So, uh, what do you think about a resolution? Like on a birthday, on the first of uh, uh, every year, uh, we make resolution. And probably not we make. We are asked to make resolutions, right? We are also to make resolution. But I don't know how, how prepared are we to make a resolution, right? Sometimes we don't want to make a resolution. It's not the time yet. But we are asked by the, the, the timeline, family, friends, uh, this whole global network to make a resolution. What are your thoughts about it? Yeah. I, I was it's like a typical guy who wants to make a resolution on the very first day of the year. Okay, and then by 31st of December, then you are happy. Okay, I made that happen are you somebody like that uh i don't know i don't really make resolutions on new year's because usually like i feel me and a lot of other people wouldn't be like ready to make a resolution like you haven't thought about it enough you don't know if it's like attainable or not so mm -hmm. i feel like i don't really make resolutions on new year's but yeah other people might yeah, plus it depends on the kind of resolution, right? Some I, I think the, the biggest problem is when people make resolutions, they, they are not making it uh, from the point of uh, this attainability, whether it is attainable or not, reachable or not. So that's why I personally think we better make aspirations rather than making a resolution. You see any difference between these two? I actually gave a talk here. 20, uh, sorry, 20, 20, uh, 2021, Jan sorry, 2020 in December, at the end, just before the new year, I made, a, I gave a talk, to me. aspiration and, uh, sorry, resolution versus aspiration. 
and who are the losers? <laughs> right? So what is aspiration? Aspiration means that you are making a plan, but you don't take it in a way that you have to suffer a lot for that. You, you take time for that. Is it a good thing? You take time. Sometimes it takes time more than any year, right? You gradually attain there, right? It is not giving you pressure, right? For your studies, for your other things. But if you think I have to do it within this 365 years, the days, then you, you start to, uh, you know, worry a lot, stress out a lot. Sometimes things that are in your plan uh, are not, uh, you know, uh, always with you, right? There are many things that uh, you have to expect from other people. Like what happened to us uh, with COVID-19, right? We did not expect that, hmm? right? So in that way, uh, we have a lot of rejections, denials, right? Do we have rejections, denials in our life? Uh, or, or we do? Or we do camera is a little bit dark. Something happened to you? Mm -hmm. Ah, no, it's better. The better now, Hunter. Yeah, it's better. Um, what do you call yeah. denial? I mean, that is connected to resolutions and all that plans in our life. Are we are we getting denied by people, plans, and other things, situations? Uh, yeah, um, there, I think a lot of people like for resolutions wise. I think a lot of people like in January first they make a lot of resolutions. Like I know a really common one is that. Uh, They'll go to the gym and then start working out and stuff but then usually yeah. by like january 31st everyone quits because yeah, it's like to, yeah buying a gym plan is a good for a solution i mean it doesn't matter because you had a burn there. what about a life life uh, related decision i would say kind of a kind of something that you understand that there are people involved with that decision to reach it's not easy to make that happen right other people have to involve also Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. usually there's like sometimes there's like really big financial problems or even like time problems and then they just think oh i should probably quit this it's not going to work yeah and and uh, recently i don't know whether you have seen that uh, a 17 years guy stabbed uh, a 15 years old uh, girl in sri lanka because uh, he was rejected uh, he was rejected, you know, I don't know. So uh, he went and he stabbed and she died just a couple of days ago. So people don't accept denial, you know, probably they don't respect what the other people think, other person thinks. And denial is a big topic. I, I think for a cultural, traditional person, it's a very big thing for them. They don't tolerate that. Uh, you can see in your household. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying your parents are like this, but you can notice, observe, how does denial, you know, get a uh, book in there? Buddhism means to accept the both validation and denial. So these resolutions go through all these things, right? People can be different. People can be changed at any time. This is, this is Buddhism, right? Changes can happen anytime. Understanding the changes, whatever the changes, positive, negative, is Buddhism. Buddhism is not simply going to a temple and light a candle and they say, now we are Buddhists. We got seal and we offered dhani and we all, all good. Is that the kind of Buddhism a lot of people practice? Uh, yeah, I think a lot of like, <laughs> not I, people a lot of people. Way. I mean, at least it is good in a way, but that's not real Buddhism. Real Buddhism is understanding what's going on. If you, if you offer a lot of things, but if you listen to a lot of Dharma talks, you're going and doing all that. But if you cannot understand this single change in your life, you are not a Buddhist. That is the point that Buddha asked us to, Buddha, was, Buddha has been striving for, uh, to tell us, teach us. Otherwise, uh, uh, he's not very much concerned about other things, right? But we do as a respect. Anyway, so resolutions are like that. So I would say, Aditana in a sense of aspiration. Some people translate this to be uh, resolution too. So how is it going to relate to a bodhisattva? Now, bodhisattva is the one who is going to practice uh, this in three ways, you know? Uh, how do we take three ways? Adithana parami, adithana 
பாருங்க அதிஷ்டான பரமாத்த பாருங்க okay so adithana parami means you are trying to work on your aspiration by being generous any example to that tarushan how is your school background like i don't know i mean how is it how is your school uh, environment going on I mean, should should uh, you know your other friend do you think that students have to be cooperative with other students to help help out each other or they are very selfish they cannot do whatever they are supposed to do they don't care about other people mm, yeah i think so what what do you think about it should we help out each other in the school setup how should we see the fine line between helping somebody and then uh, doing our things you know what things have to happen how do we see the fine fine line between these two some people trust this line too but how do we keep the goal i have to do my things too but i have to be a nice person to others in a, in a better way mm, well i don't know i don't really any know idea? any thoughts you know no idea what do you think about the school uh, classroom uh, background do you think that there is a there could have there could have happened a better environment inside the classroom or you think that everybody is so selfish and they are just uh, focusing on their studies because there's a huge competition after some time or what are your thoughts i mean with a diverse culture right it's hard like not everybody's buddhist right some people like remain with no culture so no religion i guess everybody's thoughts are different like the way buddhists acts and then catholics and like but people without a religion obviously they won't understand like what we're like learning for example in in buddhism class right they yeah won't. i'm not talking about buddhism i'm talking about uh, the, the helping uh, part of helping element uh, uh, you know in within a kind of a classroom setup like you know helping is a normal thing in any culture right Christianity or Hinduism, Islam, some other religion. I mean, do you think that? I, I mean, do you do you feel this uh, notion that can happen normally, like in the universities, schools, like everybody's working on their thing? Uh, they are in a kind of a competition. They want to emulate each other because there are only uh, certain opportunities only. So they all target plan for those uh, small number of opportunities. right uh, i mean i guess like uh, just thinking that people are not helpful enough each other i mean not you saying that hey this is how this is going to happen but i'm asking you are you happy with the cooperative nature inside your, your class setup at at the moment i mean uh, this not in general i guess yeah in general that like this like we're in high school right so high school i think the cooperativeness is quite high but i guess when you go to like university um that will like that would change a little bit because everybody has more work on their plate and then it's hard mm. to help others out so i don't think it'll like go get to a point where nobody's helping you because you do still get help at university but it won't be as much as it's in high school i remember some students uh in a university uh, when the professor uh, gives them an, uh, an assignment to do right so they they don't have internet that time right they didn't have internet so they have one they all have to go to the library the big library and then to uh, look for the book so the the first couple of people who go there they get they take all the notes and they hide the books in other shelves just think about it if other people go and find out those books and then take the notes they they didn't have internet at that time how is this going to work see the selfishness right any thoughts uh, on it Um uh, this is kind of related but our teacher told us like a story once so it's kind of the same thing he said that when he was going to college um in his time like he was doing psychology like law and stuff and then he said during his time um a lot of the kids uh sometimes what they did like they went to the library as fast as they could and then they like photocopied the books that they got and then they cut out all the pages and then they put them back 
so that the next person wouldn't be able to like look at them. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So that's why the first thing Aditana Parami means that we are uh, working towards our aspiration by being generous with other people. So let's say you have your aspiration, you want to pass the exam, you want to uh, uh, work on your techie skills, you want to work on your singing skill, you want to become somebody, somebody. So while you are working on that, you are also being generous for other people to help out how to become such a person, how to uh, follow a certain path, right? Is that a good thing? That is Adithana Parami, that you have your aspiration and you're working on it. At the same time, you are helping other people to work on their paths. Maybe they, they have their own path, right? But a lot of people, they uh, don't go their way. They only work on their one. They don't care about what other people do. I mean, I mean, if, but if that is a privacy issue, then of course you should not involve. But if you think that you can help out, I mean, in a, in a certain way, not in a way that is not good, that is really good. That is Adithana Parami. Then the second one, Adithana Upaparami. Now this Upaparami always carries about uh, being generous with uh, your body, right? Sometimes uh, you may have to sacrifice, right? Let's say you are having your own aspiration. You are working on it. Sometimes you... Okay, one good example is that there are cancer patients who need some uh, head hairs, right? They need head hairs. And you have your aspiration uh, to grow in your hair if you are a, a female, right? And then uh, probably you're going to give your head hairs to a cancer lady who needs uh, some hair. That's Aditana Paparami, and she's, she's getting better in that life. Is that a good example? I mean that, yeah, not everybody wants to uh, donate one's head hairs, right? Ovidi, any thoughts? Yeah, um, Trine, I think like it's really important um, also like giving stuff that you sometimes might not want to give because it's super special to you, like mm -hmm. doing a blood donation or uh, like stuff like that. It's sometimes like, it's also risky, but it's like giving your, here it's not very risky but like yeah, yeah. i mean that's organ, why i was suggesting organ, organ, not donations and stuff, organ donations and stuff they're risky for you sometimes too so i feel like that's really important when you're thinking about someone else too and not just you yeah so organ donation or blood donation uh, seem a little bit uh, daunting to many it's a little bit risky for many but although you can do but if you are really serious one day not now so if you are if you are serious we want to make your own decisions one day. But at the moment, let's look at non-risky stuff. Then uparami, when, when you think about uparami, don't think about blood donation in the first place. What about you are helping out some like a, like a lady who needs some head hair, who is having some chemotherapy or I would say cancer things. What are the other similar things that we can think about? There are non-risky stuff, but we can donate with our body. Any thoughts? This is kind of a random thing that came to my mind. Uh, giving uh, yeah precious hair. What else? Any other thoughts? You have to think think regularly about it. Does it happen from the male side too? <laughs> I don't think males have a lot of hair. Would like. Uh, would giving clothes or something like that be um, in this? That'd be Adhikthana Parami, the, the previous okay. one. It is not your body one, right? It is outside mm -hmm. stuff, material stuff. It, it comes under Adhikthana Parami. So, so this one, it has to be like from your body, but not risky. Not risky stuff. Mm -hmm. Head hair is a good one. What else? Uh, maybe like kidney. What the? Oh, that's a kind of, kind of risky thing. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. yeah. Something that is not, yeah, probably you can think about it later. That is Adithana Paparami. Then Adithana Paramatta Paramatta. Paramatta means you are sacrificing your whole life for somebody's aspiration. Who is doing that actually in reality? Somebody, there's somebody who is sacrificing one's life for the whole. 
community. The Bodhisattva, the same person, right? Bodhisattva does not accept enlightenment in the first place. He wants to help out other people. Now, he has his own aspiration. At the same time, he wants to help other people. Actually, he put he puts other people aspiration first. That is why he wants to become the Buddha, full Buddha. Now, a normal devotee, they might want to become an Arahant. Right? I just do my meditation, then I'm fine. I'm going to attain if I don't care about other people. What happened? This happens to many, right? Especially the normal Buddhist thing. I don't care about what other people do. I just do my meditation. I offer flowers. I offer dani. I'm good. That's not going to work sometimes. Because that sometimes you are creating a kind of a huge amount of selfishness through uh, even the Buddhist uh, principles. Uh, because Buddha said in one sutta there are, that there are four people in this world. I think I told you at the beginning of this series. The first kind of person is the one who is very selfish, who is only thinking about oneself. Are there people like that? They are only thoughtful about their plans, their things, their food. Huh? Seth, have you noticed such people in society? Uh, yeah, I have. Pretty much about oneself. They don't care about other people. If they want to play a radio kind of a music, they don't care. It is played out, you know regardless of what other people think. And there are people, the second kind of person is who is overly altruistic. Or overly altruistic, not like altruistic, overly. Actually, we should not do anything in excess. We have to do everything in moderation. Offering, uh, practicing word, uh, precepts, also practice in meditation because if you do if you do anything like too much, that's going to be a problem. Now let's take a good example. You you're looking for healthy food, right? You're looking for healthy food. Like let's say you are going to be sugar free. You are going to um, not consume a lot of salty uh, oily stuff. But then you are continuing with healthy food too much. Is it a good thing? It's not a it's not a good thing. Too less and too much, they are both ends in Buddhism, extreme ends. You have to be in the middle. That doesn't entail a little bit of bad things. Even when you are practicing good things, find your moderation. Right? You have to find the moderation. So, what, what were we talking just now? It's about... Um, the about, person who's overly altruistic. Overly altruistic. It's the second person. The third person is both a little bit of selfish and a little, little bit of altruistic. The both elements. Right? There are both elements. And the fourth person is neither selfish nor altruistic. Are there such people? They don't do anything for them. They don't do anything for other people. So who are the people? I mean, who is the person did the Buddha recommend out of these four? Hmm? Very selfish one, very altruistic one, both selfish and altruistic one, neither selfish nor altruistic one. Which one did the Buddha recommend? Uh, neither that? selfish nor altruistic. No third one. We need to be yeah. selfish a little bit. Is mm -hmm. it? Is it bad? Well, I think I think the third one because you sometimes do need to be like a little selfish. Like for example, yeah, we, we we do need to be a little. It's not actually selfish like in the first one. The first it's, one is like for example, you wake up early in the morning, you take care of. We have some sort of self care. You brush your teeth. You take a good shower, you eat healthy food. Isn't this being selfish? Yeah, you are working on towards you. But at the same time, you you take care of other people. Other people, did they eat? Did they have the same comforts you had? Right? So you are bringing the both like in moderation. 
So I think this selfish, I don't think that is called selfishness. I mean, the third thing, but it's kind of something you are looking at yourself. Self-care, I would say self-care. So we need the both a little bit. Uh, otherwise, we will be stuck in our life. There are people who, who doesn't do anything, who don't do anything, actually. I mean, for example, uh, they don't uh, study well. I know there are people who don't even take a shower, but they expect other people to take showers. They don't eat well, but they expect, they, they bring all the food to other people, but they are not eating well. They are working 24 hours. They are uh, helping other people all the time, but they are not doing something for themselves. Is it a good thing? No, it's a huge amount of uh, stress, anxiety. But they say, we are happy to do that. I'm happy to do it. But that's not good. You have to find the balance. The both, a little bit of self. I would say self-care oh, yeah. and then uh, altruism. Okay, so now you understand, uh, you know, aditana, that means aspiration. Aspiration has, aspir the, the perfection on aspiration has three parts. That means aspiration, uh, call uh, aspiration part of me, that's just material offerings. That means you have your aspiration and you are helping other people's aspirations by helping materially. And the uh, aditana parvi means that uh, you have your aspirations and you are helping out somebody's aspiration with your bodily things, non-risky stuff, like head hairs kind of stuff. And uh, Adittana Paramatta Parami means that you are practicing uh, aspiration, you're on working on your aspiration while helping others' aspiration, probably you might sacrifice your whole life. This is only good for a bodhisattva because that part is a little bit higher than a normal degree of uh, person. Any questions? So we are gradually reaching out to uh, the 10th parami. So I think once we finish these 10 paramis, we may have some questions and then we will move on to other uh, Buddha's uh, specific special uh, aspects of his life both his life and some of his teachings. Uh, Bhante Sumedha also covering some of his uh, and most of his uh, aspects too. I think he talked about conflict management, right? Last couple of weeks. So how did he solve problems with people? Huh? There were a lot of uh, difficult people who came to him, right? Some people wanted to kill him. Some people wanted to blame him. Some people wanted to criticize him. So how did he manage those times? How did he manage those uh, untamed individuals without a fight, without an argument, uh, with so much peace? So th this is what I think he may have been teaching. Okay, so if you have no more questions, so uh, I think uh, we'll take... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, just a quick question. Um, yeah, was so, uh, not really this year, but last year, you know how we had the the final like the exam or something the exam with uh, Mike. Yeah. I uh, just um we didn't really get any grades for them. Just wondering. How we didn't get. Them. No, we didn't get. I, I, didn't, I didn't get. get grades. But what he was telling me was that he would like to send the uh, results individually to emails. Yeah. Did any of you get the results individually? No. Okay. Uh, I probably send a message to him, so he will. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that's twenty twenty one. So what happened in twenty twenty? Remember? Um, I'm not quite sure. Not, not quite sure. Okay. Okay, I'll send a message to him, so he will be, yeah, sending me a response. Okay, so let's take uh, two to three minutes of uh, break. So, uh, so Bhante Sumedhi will come at 3.15. Let's take four minutes of break. Okay, stay tuned. Yeah, good Saturday.